Roma Wine present Suspense. Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud! Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the Man in Black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you two of Hollywood's favorite screen stars, Miss Virginia Bruce and Mr. Alan Jocelyn, with the noted character actor George Zuko. Our suspense play, which is produced and directed by William Spear, presents a rather neat problem. That of a crime committed while no criminal was present. And so, with the locked room, and with the performance of Virginia Bruce as an exceedingly bright young lady named Iris Lane, of Alan Jocelyn as an exceedingly shy young man named Harold Mills, and of George Zuko as the exceedingly polished Dr. Woodhall, we again hope to keep you in... Suspense! Mr. Seaton's residence. Who's calling? No, Mr. Seaton is not in. No, there will not be any statement for the papers. Harold, will you get that? Hello, no, I can't tell you anything Mr. about Seaton's it. Mr. Seaton's residence? No. Oh, dear, no. There'll be Here we absolutely go again. no statement. Hello, if Mr. Seaton's residence. If you wish, residents. but you're only wasting your Look, time. Look, I told you this morning there wouldn't be Very any statement well. for the newspapers. Yes, no, right. not tomorrow either. Oh, I'm dear. I'm sorry, I'm awfully busy right now. I said I was busy. Busy! <laughs> Phew, what a day. It's rather disturbing how quickly the reporters got wind of it. I do hope no harm's been done. Well, we did our best. It's too big a deal to keep secret anyway. There are always rumors, and it's the business of newspapers to pick up rumors. Dear me, I wonder how he's going to take it. The old man? <laughs> he probably won't be tickled pink. You know how he is. I know I'll be relieved when he has it under lock and key. My word. Oh, good evening, Mr. Seaton. Good evening, Harold. Miss Lane. You still working? No, we thought we'd stick around until you got here. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm so late. The newspapers have been calling, Mr. Seaton. What? The newspapers? How in blazes did... We told them they... there wouldn't be any statement. Well, I should hope not. Now, how do you suppose then, they... Then it's not finished? Oh, the deal's closed, all right. Have it with me, as a matter of fact. With you, sir? You've yep. been carrying it around in your pocket? Ah, you see why I don't feel so good about the newspapers. But at least I got it home, all right. Would you like to see it? Oh, oh. yes. Doesn't look like very much wrapped like this, but... Well, there it is. Do you like it? Oh, oh. The Lavella Diamond. What a beauty. It's enormous. Yes, it is. But tomorrow we start to cut it. And within a year, it'll be just so many engagement rings. You know, I hate to see it change. It's so beautiful the way it is. Well, there's no money in it for me this way. Oh, uh, Dr. Woodhall called. He wants to give you a checkup if he can catch you before dinner. Oh, Dr. Woodhall's an old woman. Treats me like an invalid. Oh, well. Anything else? Nothing important. Well, Harold, will you answer? Certainly. Mr. Seaton's residence. Who's calling, please? Uh, just a moment. Mr. Seaton, it's a Mr. Van Houten. Van Houten? Yes, he wants but, to speak to you. Oh, oh uh, tell him. Tell him I'm out of town. Mr. Van Houten, Mr. Seaton's out of town. Well, dear me, you can think what you like, but Mr. Seaton is not here. Goodbye. That's odd. What did, what did he say? He said he has information that you are here, and he insists on coming up here now. He sounds most disagreeable. Well, I don't think he's likely to show up. If he does, don't let him in. All right, Mr. Seaton. I'll, I'll be in my study until Woodhall gets here. Don't forget your medicine, Mr. Seaton. I put it right beside the seltzer bottle. No, I won't forget. Well, I hope Dr. Woodhall hurries. I'm dead. I'm sure you must be. Mr. Seaton seems awfully proud of his new stone, doesn't he? I thought he was cool as a cucumber. How would you feel if you just bought the biggest diamond in the world? Oh, the second biggest, I believe, Iris. Not that that's anything to belittle. What do you suppose he paid for it? I understand the price was something under a million, but he expects to get back well over a million and a half once it's cut and polished. You know, Harold, putting that kind of money into a piece of stone. I know if I had a million, I'd never buy diamonds. Dear me, for that matter, neither would I. But for some people, you know, diamonds take the place of other things. Power, love. Iris, what would you do if you had a million dollars? 
I don't know. There are a lot of swell people I'd like to help out. And I'd like to travel. Well, there are lots of things. What would you do? Do you really want to know? Of course I do. Well, I don't, don't think I should say this, but if I had a million dollars or even much less, I'd, I'd ask you to marry me. Harold. No, please, I don't want you to say anything. You don't have to. I know I'm not the sort for you, really. I'm not like Dr. Woodhall, you know, sure of myself. Oh, it's not that, Harold. Honestly, it's just that you never said anything oh. before. You never even... What was that? It sounded as if it came from the study. Mr. Seaton? Mr. Seaton, is anything wrong? He doesn't answer. Mr. Seaton! The door is locked. Yes, do you have your key, Iris? Right here. Mr. Seaton! Mr. Seaton... Why, where is he? There he is, on the floor. What happened to him? Is he sick? Wait, I'll see. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, put him on the couch. Just a minute, Iris. I don't think you'd better look. Oh, he's very badly injured. Injured? But how? It's his head. Get a doctor, will you? A doctor? Yes. Someone's tried to kill him. Hurry. To kill him? All right. Try Dr. Woodhall. Maybe he hasn't left. I will. Operator. Get me grad at six. Nine, seven hundred. Well, good evening, Iris. Oh, Dr. Woodhull. Never mind, operator. Come on, doctor. I was just calling you. Something wrong? It's Mr. Seaton. He's hurt. Someone tried to... Harold, Dr. Woodhull was just coming in. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, doctor. What's the matter with Seaton? I... I think someone's tried to kill him. It's his head. You can see the blood. I found this under him. What's that? It seems to be a piece of broom handle filled with lead. Evidently, he was struck with it. Hmm, concussion. Nasty. But that's still some pulse. I just hand me my bag. Here you are. And you'd better call the police. The police? Certainly. This is attempted murder. Oh, dear me. Good evening. Did I hear someone say murder? Who are you? Well, my name is Van Hout, and I telephoned a little while ago. How did you get in? I rang. No one answered. I walked in. I wish to speak with Mr. Satan, but uh, I see that perhaps I'm a little too late. Huh? Perhaps you knew you'd be a little too late, Mr. Van Hout. Harold, I think we'd better leave that to the police. Will you call them? But I can't figure out how it happened. Harold, you and I have been outside that, outside that door all day. I know there wasn't anyone in this room. Iris, it must have been the windows. What do you mean, the windows? No one could climb. See, there's a ladder still there, and it took us some time to open the door. Yes, there is a ladder. Oh, yes, yeah, a very convenient ladder. Oh, but don't you see? It still couldn't have happened. What do you mean? Someone came through the window, hit Mr. Seaton, and escaped the same way. But it couldn't have happened that way. Look, the windows are locked, both of them, on the inside. And Harold and I were outside the only door. The windows are locked? Dear me, that means Mr. Seaton was alone. Alone in a locked room. Before we return to the scene of our suspense play, let me describe another scene that might even now be taking place in the handsome cafe of the Hotel Nacional de Cuba in Havana. An American visitor has remarked to his Cuban host, but great enjoyment the gay Cuban music and the dancing gives him. Gracefully, the Cuban host returns the compliment, saying, but your United States makes us a gift that brings great pleasure on many occasions. The superb wine from the choice wine districts of your California, this fine Roma wine. Yes, for a wine to give great enjoyment, it must have greatness of character. And it's this that has spread the fame of Roma wines to other lands. Why otherwise would these countries import Roma wines to be enjoyed as a rare luxury? How fortunate, then, are you who can enjoy any of the Roma wines, many different delicious wine types, whenever you choose, without additional charge for import duty, with no high shipping cost added to your small cost for Roma wine. Yet here is a quality so high it has won international recognition, quality coupled with cost so modest, that Roma wines are America's largest selling wines. Why not make your own taste test of these good Roma wines and discover for yourself the fine wine qualities acclaimed by wine experts of many lands? I'll spell out the name for you. R-O-M-A, Roma wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our soundstage Virginia Bruce and Alan Jocelyn with George Zuko in The Locked Room by John Dixon Carr. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. All right, folks, are you all here? 
Now, let's see. There's Miss Iris Lane. Yes. Dr. Charles Woodhall. Yes. Harold Mills. Present. And uh, Mr. Alex Van Houten. Oh. Now, let's get down to business. We know some of the facts, but not enough of them. We know that you four were the only people in the house when Mr. Seaton was robbed. Uh, outside of the cook, and she was in the kitchen. We know Seaton had the diamond on him when he went into the study. And that someone lifted it before we got here. We haven't located the diamond yet, but we will. Now, this business of the wind is being locked. Somebody here knows who locked them. One of you hasn't come clean, or all of you. Well, it's easy to see what you're thinking, Captain Hadley. As we tell it, it looks as though Harold and I did the job. But we didn't, that's all. That's all. The only door locked and watched before and after. Windows locked before and after. No one hidden in the room before or after. And I don't believe in ghosts, so the thing's impossible. Now, which one of you locked those windows? Mr. Mills? Well, really, dear me, officer, why would I do the one thing to make it look as if Iris and I had committed this crime? Yes. You know, Harold's got something there. If the windows hadn't been locked, you'd know someone from outside, did it? Look, I'm trying to be patient with you people. But if Mr. Seaton doesn't die, which he hasn't yet, he'll tell us who did it. So I advise you to come clean now. Uh, Dr. Woodhall. Yes, officer? You and our friend Mr. Van Houten here were, as the young lady puts it, outside when it happened. Maybe you managed to lock the windows afterwards. But Captain... How could he? He was too busy helping Mr. Seaton to get anywhere near the windows. And neither did Mr. Van Houten. I'd swear to that. Oh, thank you, dear lady. I did not expect such a kindness. Oh, Captain. Well, Barton? Uh, the nurse has to tell you that Seaton's come too. He's talking. Talking? Is he out of his head, or does he make sense? He says you can ask him some questions if you don't tax him too much. Well, now we'll get some, please. I think all of you had better come with me. Yes, all right. Here's the captain, miss. We'll try not to upset him too much, nurse. Uh, captain, maybe being a suspect, I shouldn't say anything, but if you don't mind, I don't think it's safe to question him. Safe? For who, doctor? Not since we're all... I want to tell what I can. But, Mr. Seaton, I know your condition. I don't think you should exert your... Shut up, Woodhall. I was in the study. Just sat down at the desk. I was waiting for Dr. Woodhall. The chair faces the door into the office. I heard Harold and Iris talking outside. Both of them? Yes. The sound carries pretty well through the door. They were talking. There was some nonsense about what they'd do if they had a million dollars. Heard what we said? Then I think Harold was proposing or something. Oh, dear me, Mr. Seaton. I never realized that you could... Well, I could. I was taking my medicine, and then I heard, I think, a footstep behind me. I set my glass down and started to get up. Did you turn around? I didn't have time. Something smashed down on my head, and that's all I remember. Uh, then you didn't know who it was? No. And I don't know how. Uh, what do you mean, uh, how? Be because I, I had locked the windows, both of them. You locked the windows? Yes. I saw someone had put a ladder up. Suppose it was the gardener or somebody, but I didn't want anyone climbing around, so I... I... I locked both windows. Uh, you're sure no one was hidden in the room? Positive. Captain, I think he's had enough. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, I guess you're right, Doctor. Uh, will you people step outside? I'll be there in a minute. Come on, Doctor. Harold. Now, uh, Mr. Seaton, uh, what I want to know is... Could anyone not... It's criminal to keep him talking. Poor Mr. Seaton, he does look awfully bad. Yeah, uh, I suppose it's proper to feel pity for even Francis Seaton. Look, huh? Mr. Van Houten, you've made several remarks like that. Maybe you've got your reasons, but I don't think it would sound so good to the police. <laughs> Believe me, dear lady... My distaste for Mr. Satan is purely objective. It's terribly perplexing, isn't it? Now that Mr. Seaton's confirmed us on the locked windows, I can't see how the police are going to prove anything. Look, let's not kid ourselves. We're all supposed to be nice, civilized people. But one of the four of us is a thug. A thug who beat a defenseless man over the head and took that diamond. But dear me, as I see it, that's just the point. It proves that none of us could have done it. Well, if Mr. Seaton's story proves that we couldn't, it proves a hundred times more that no one else could. Well, Captain, is there anything more we can do? Yes. You will all be searched again for the diamond. And none of you are to leave this house until further notice. Not leave but the what house. About my practice. I've got a lot of work. Now, to surely it requires more evidence than you have to hold us over the supposed disappearance of a diamond. I'm not holding you because of the diamond. I'm holding you on suspicion of murder. Mr. Seaton is dead. 
Come in, Iris. Oh, Dr. Woodhall, what do you want? I'll only be a minute. Well, all right. I hate to disturb you, but I'm really worried. You are? Iris, why don't you try to get out of here? Get out of here? Why on earth should I? But don't you realize you're suspected of murder? You could hide somewhere until this has all been cleared up. Are you crazy? Sure, I'm suspected, Doc, but no more than you. How's it going to look if I suddenly disappear? Yes, I suppose you're right, but if I could only keep you out of this. I'm so worried I can't think straight. You have a cigarette, Iris? Yes, look in that box on the table. Oh, watch out, there's a lamp cord. Oh, I'm sorry, that was clumsy. Oh, don't let it worry you, it's no heirloom. What's that? Huh? Iris, look. Where did you get that? The diamond. Where did you get it? Why, it was on the floor. On the floor? Iris, didn't the police search in here? How did it get on the floor? I suppose it must have been in the lamp. Yes, you see? This part lifts out. It must have been an oil lamp. Apparently. May I have it, please? The diamond? It was found here. What do you want to do with it? I want it. Iris, it's not safe. Sure, I know. Give it to me. Well... Thanks. Are you going to give it to Captain Hadley? Why? I don't think it would be wise... Not yet. <laughs> You're not afraid of something, are you? I suppose they don't believe you. Suppose they think that well, you... Well, I'll think about it. Oh, Dr. Woodhall, will you do me a favor? Uh, certainly, if I can. But you meet me here in exactly ten minutes. Ah, uh, you are coming downstairs. Oh, sure, but I have a couple of things to do. I won't be long. Perhaps I should wait a bit. Oh, no, please, you don't have to do that. But all right, but be careful. Careful. I mean, don't let anyone know you have the diamond, because... No, no. Yes, because whoever killed Seaton for it would kill me, too. And I know it will be soon. Tonight. It has to be. What? Yes, I'll do it as loud as I can, but don't slip, because I'm counting on you and... Iris, are you ready? Oh, well, yes, darling, and I'm sorry. I'm I'm really stuck for a couple of days, but we'll make it soon. Sure, dinner and a show. All right, darling, goodbye. I didn't mean to barge in. That's okay. Let's go downstairs. Where are the others? Harold and Van Harten. I think I heard them when I came up. Yes, they're in the office. Listen. Well, on what basis? Come on, let's go in. They'll only be for a few days. Oh. Oh, we wondered if you were coming down, Iris. My, you startled me. We are not intruding. Intruding? Well, it sounded like you were having a little argument. Well, it wasn't exactly that. You see, we were talking about... Oh, well, dear me, I don't know why I shouldn't tell you. About an engagement ring. Engagement ring? Harold... Yeah, I didn't want you to know. I'm... I'm buying one from Mr. Van Houten. I don't have quite enough money, and I won't have for a few days. Mr. Van Houten sells rings. Well, I thought that was understood. That's my profession. I deal in diamonds in, in a small way. Diamonds? Do the police... Do the word diamond so surprising, Doctor? Naturally, the police would have to know my business with Mr. Satan. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure they would. It's only... Now, you are hinting at my apparent dislike of the late Mr. Satan, Doctor. Well, I hated him. He was a cheat and a fraud. He cheated me. That doesn't sound like Mr. Satan. My dear young lady... There are a hundred men in Amsterdam who would be glad to know they suffered. But as you know, such dislike was not the motive for this murder. Well, there's no need to be huffy, Mr. Van Houten. Dear me, we all know what the motive was. Well, I guess it was motive enough for any one of us. Yes. Look, let's face it. One of us killed Seaton, that's true. But three of us didn't. And yet we're all suspected. I think if the four of us let down our hair, maybe we can figure this thing out. Iris? I think that sounds very reasonable. If Iris needs advice or help... Maybe I do with that... I've found the diamond. Dear me, found it. You found, found it? Found it where? In my room. Dr. Woodhall accidentally knocked over a lamp. It was inside. And uh, where is it now? I brought it with me. It's here in my purse. And uh, then the Iris, police do not know, eh? So here I am, stuck with this thing, and I don't know what to do about it. Oh, oh dear, Iris. I'm really ashamed. I don't know how to tell you. Ashamed of what? 
Well, I couldn't tell the police. At least I thought I shouldn't. You see, Mr. Seaton told me in confidence, but now that we've agreed to be frank and honest... What are you driving at? I don't know why Mr. Seaton was killed. Maybe none of us will ever know that. But it wasn't because of the diamond. I knew it all along. You see, that isn't the real diamond at all. But preposterous. You expect us to believe that... Uh, Miss Lane, let me see the diamond, please. Sure, you're the expert in the crowd. Uh. Take a look. I'll hold on to it. Though. I don't care what Mr. Van Houten says. Mr. Seaton told me it was a replica he brought home. I don't know why. This is ridiculous. Why should anyone plant a false diamond in Iris's room? What about it, Mr. Van Houten? Why, incredible. The... Well, what? Uh, even without my glass, I can see that this is false. There are no planes of cleavage. A very shoddy piece of work. It's phony? I don't get it. Why was he killed, then? You see how I've been racking my brains? Here, Mr. Van Houten, maybe we better put it in the safe. No, I yeah. might as well keep it. We'll have to give it to the captain, anyway. Yes, I suppose we'd better tell him. Dear me, he'll be terribly distressed, I'm afraid. You know, Harold, I hate to admit it, but this is beginning to get me down. I, I feel jumpy and sort of sick. Oh, it's probably my fault. I should have told well, you. Oh, not just about the diamond. Everything. The locked windows... The way he looked before he died. Iris, do you feel bad? You look as I'm sorry. I hate to be so silly. I do feel sort of shaky. Maybe if I lie down, would you help me into the study? Here, Iris, let me open the door, will you please, Doctor? On the couch, Iris? Yes, please. I'll lie down right here. Oh, Dr. Woodhall, do you have something I could take for this headache? I... If you're really sick. Why, yes, if you think you need it. Is there a glass? I have something here. Well, here is a glass, Paul. Huh? This is a mild sedative, Iris. Now a little water. Here, Doctor, here's the seltzer bottle. Ah, oh, that'll do it. I'll drink this down, Iris. Set it right there. I'll drink it. I just want to close my eyes for a minute. Will you switch out the lights when you go out and... And maybe you should lock the door. Oh, yes, of course. We'll call you for dinner. Try to sleep. Poor girl. She was very fond. Who is it? Oh, you're awake, huh? Then how? Where's the diamond? The diamond? Give it to me. Well? But you said it was false. No, we are not so easily fooled. We know what goes on. We? Who do you mean? Never mind. Give me the diamond. And if I don't? You know what will happen if you don't. Who's there? What are you doing? Then out. What is it? What's happened? Who is it? Turn on the lights. Well, I seem to have arrived just in time. Oh, Harold. You hit him. He's only knocked out. But how are you feeling? I uh, feel much better. Oh, you didn't drink your medicine. No, I didn't. Oh, dear me, I was afraid you were too smart for that. Iris, I think you and I should have a serious talk. You don't mind if I lock the door. Would it make any difference if I did? Very little, I admit. Now, Iris, just how much do you know? About what? Oh, come, come. There's no need for you to be reticent. I shall have to kill you in any case. But you can, Harold. And who'll stop me, Dr. Woodhall? No, Iris, he'll be very busy for some time. The cook has become quite ill. You poisoned her. Oh, it's nothing much. She'll recover. Tell me just how much do you know? Well, I, I know about the seltzer bottle. That's how you knocked out Seaton. Oh, that's very clever of you. Dear me, if I had more time, I should be inclined not to kill you. But it is late, and I sail with the diamond at midnight. I'm signed on as a steward on a freighter bound for Argentina. So you see, it's really time that makes this unpleasantness necessary. Well, Harold, you know they'll find me before midnight. But they will find with you Mr. Van Houten. Poor Van Houten. He'll be very confused. You know, I actually persuaded him that you and Dr. Woodhall were the culprits. That's why he came up here to get the diamond. And now you're going to frame him with my murder. You're a pretty smart boy, aren't you, Harold? Oh, thank you, my dear. They'll probably suspect me, too, after they find out I've gone. Tell me, how did you guess about the seltzer bottle? <laughs> the condemned woman ate a hearty breakfast. 
Okay. I'll talk. Well, I knew it must have been a seltzer bottle, and I realized it was one of those kinds you fill yourself with a capsule to make the bubbles. But what did you put in it? A concoction known as a Mickey Finn. But it felt so much like a blow on the head that even Seaton confirmed my little story. Well, I knew whoever did it would try the same thing on me to get the diamond. You were the one who got me the seltzer for my medicine tonight. But I suppose you saw it coming. Your little trap. Yes, I'm afraid I did. <laughs> Dear me, we're just too smart for each other, aren't we? And you sent me out of the room to phone for a doctor. And in those few moments, you hit Seaton over the head. That really killed him. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, I wish Seaton hadn't locked those windows. Maybe you think I don't. Well, Iris. Well? I really hate to do this. Iris, I'll give you a choice. Choice of what? I have here a fairly efficient gun, but it's noisy and it's messy, too. I don't like to use it, but if I have to... What else? Or you could drink what I put for you in that glass from the seltzer bottle. Oh, that would be so much easier for you. It's practically tasteless. After you drink it, you'll not mind what else is necessary. Well, I... I suppose... That's I... right. Pick it up. Pick it up. Now, drink it. Quickly. All right. Here goes. Why, you... timing, Captain Hadley. The glass wasn't a bad signal. It was nice timing on your part, Miss Lane, throwing yourself on the floor. You hadn't figured on the gun. No, I hadn't. Is Van Houten coming around, Doctor? Yes, he'll be all right. Okay. Come along, Harold. Oh, this is such a shame. Iris, before I go, I'd like to tell you how sorry I am. Sorry? Yes, about that proposal. Even if it was an alibi, I almost meant it. Dear me, it looks now as though I shall never marry. Yes, dear me, it certainly does. And so closes The Locked Room, starring Virginia Bruce and Alan Jocelyn with George Zuko. Tonight's tale of Suspense. Mr. Jocelyn appeared by courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Before we tell you about next week's stars and story, Roma Wine, sponsor of these weekly suspense dramas, brings you one of tonight's stars, Miss Virginia Bruce, with a message of real importance, Miss Bruce. Somewhere the other day, I came across a small news item. It mentioned that the men and women of our armed forces, most of whose pay averages very little more than $50 a month, have subscribed the huge total of a quarter of a billion dollars worth of United States war bonds. Ladies and gentlemen, if you need a testimonial to the worth of subscribing to the fourth war loan, which is now on, I think this news item supplies it. If the men and women who are fighting this war have that kind of faith in the future of our country... How can we have less? This is the time when our armed forces are making ready for the final extra effort which will bring us victory. They need your extra support from extra purchases of war bonds. For the fourth war loan, one extra $100 war bond, please. Next Monday, same time, Roma Wines will bring you two distinguished actresses, Miss Ida Lupino and Miss Agnes Moorhead. Don't forget, then, next Monday for Ida Lupino and Agnes Moorhead in Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.